Welcome again guys, welcome to another video from Shomu's Biology and in this video we will be talking about uh, the histone acetylation and methylation. I have different videos on entirely dedicated to histone acetylation, deacetylation and also about the DNA methylation process in epigenetics videos. But in this video I will be talking uh, briefly about both of these processes in a little bit details because I have seen some of the students have problems regarding the acetylation and methylation and what they actually do. So for that clearing up I am doing this video. So let's say histone acetylation and why we require all these things this acetylation methylation these are chemical modifications obviously because we have histone and we all know what is histone if you don't know what's histone definitely you should not watch this video right now you should watch my histone video previously I hopefully put a link here in the description and also in the annotation click here and watch that video first and then come back here and watch this video. So I am assuming that you all know what histone is. Uh, let's say for your convenience, I'm drawing it again. Uh, so let's say here, histones are uh, protein molecules. Uh, one of the very very common protein molecules that are present. Let's say this is the these are the histones. Let me draw it this way. These are the histone, for example. And we have also the DNA in the red color here. So DNA is wrapped around these histone molecules out there wrapped around histones. Why? Because we have a very compact structure which is called as a chromosomes. Remember we all know very very much complicated structure. If you look at zooming into the chromosome we have the 30 nanometer uh, fiber then we have all those beads and string model. This is called the beads in a string model because this is the string as a DNA and the beads here are acting as the histone uh, where the DNA is wrapped. So these are histones that is the DNA. So this is how it, it presents. Now these histones are protein molecules and actually there are four different types of histones are present. They are arranged with each other and they have different terminal, N terminal as well as C terminal. So the C terminal portion of the histones are usually modified by the different types like acetylation and methylation here uh, are different like deacetylation and many different chemical modifications are also possible like phosphorylation and all these things. So the C terminal portion are very much important in all the histones and among the four different histones one is H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. So among them if we look uh, most of them are uh, all of them can be modified but H3 and H4 are much more uh, vulnerable for not vulnerable actually they are much more picked for the modification and because they also contain most of the lysine and arginine residues and uh, the modifications that we are talking about here the methylation acetylation they occur mostly in the arginine and lysine residues so here this histone modifications are required for uh, turning certain genes on and off inside the eukaryotic genome because uh, the idea of modifications like this all these chemical modifications they are the part of epigenetics and actually they relate with uh, the gene expression and the genetic regulation of eukaryotic cell uh, of eukaryotic genome. So the regulation the gene regulation in eukaryotic genome actually occur in multiple stages uh, like uh, like say the the Pro, uh, I mean promoter dependent processes in the DNA level but here it also occurs in this histone level and the nucleosome level because this model is called as a nucleosome where we have a histone interacting with the DNA. So this type of modification can take place here and, and in this modification if you look this H3 and H4 they are much more vulnerable. So now we will be talking about what is the functionality of acetylation and methylation more often. So acetylation acetylation let's say we have a gene that is present somewhere here let's say this is a section let me take a black here so this is a region where we have a gene x and we want uh, this gene x to be expressed into mrna then translated into proteins so this gene x is kind of wrapped inside uh, somehow and they have an inside folded in in, in somewhere in the nucleosome so RNA polymerase which is the enzyme to, to transcribe this gene will not be able to bind here and transcribe this gene if this gene remains like that. So what we need to do we need to open this DNA we need to unwrap the DNA from the histone and for that reason this acetylation take place. Histone acetylation helps in unwrapping the DNA from the histone remember unwrapping, unwrapping the DNA from histone. Now in this case 
how the unwrapping take place the enzyme we require there are certain enzymes required for this process to occur and the enzyme we require for the unwrapping for this acetylation is called histone acetyl transferase or simply termed as HAT, histone acetyl transferase enzyme. This enzyme transfers the acetyl, hist acetyl group to the C-terminal section of this histone. And as a result, it will unwrap the DNA from the histone. Okay. Now, let's say once the transcription is done, and after a certain time, we no more require uh, that gene or uh, protein that is produced by the gene. So, we need to block the transcription. In that case, we will go for the deacetylation. The deacetylation. And who helps in that? There is another enzyme for that. And that enzyme here for the deacetylation, it will help in the wrapping again. So, the enzyme we have here is histone deacetylase or simply known as HDAC. So, these are the two enzymes. HAT unwraps it, makes it activated, accessible. HDAC rewraps it, makes it blocked again. So, these are the function of methyl acetylation part completely. Now, let us talk about the methylation. Now, there are confusion about methylation because methylation in some books you find methylation helps in the activation of, uh, uh, the, of the gene. Some book you find uh, helps in the inhibition of some gene. Now, in a way, both of those terms are true because methylation depends on the situation and also it depends on what kind of uh, methylation is going on and where exactly the methylation is going on. Depending upon uh, that, it depends whether that gene will be accessible or that gene will be turned off. So, methylation have the both the power, both of the power, the power of acetylation, deacetylation, that is the activation and inactivation both. So, for example, if the methylation takes place in mouse, I am giving the example, if the methylation takes place in the histone 3, let us say histone 3 is very much hot region for the methylation. So, histone 3 and in histone 3 there are different lysine residues, usually the lysine residue 3, lysine residue 9. Now, if the methylation takes place in the lysine residue 3 of the histone 3, in that case, <clears throat> they will activate, I mean they will open or unwrap the DNA and make it activated and that gene will be accessible and they will transcribe it and they will produce the protein. But if the same type of methylation takes place in the H3L9 or the lysine 9th lysine residue of the H3 histone in that same mouse that turn it into the inactivated form. I mean they will rewrap the DNA, they will never open that DNA from the histone. right? And one of the biggest example of methylation doing inactivated task or methylation doing the uh, off switch task is the scenario called X inactivation. We all have heard this name probably. If you don't know what is X inactivation, you may watch the video of X inactivation in my channel. It is also called as uh, dosage compensation. So, the idea here uh, in X inactivation when uh, the zygotes are formed when the when the two zygotes I mean when the two gametes meet together to form the zygote the twin nucleus let us say uh, from the uh, father uh, nucleus that is the sperm if the sperm carries one X uh, chromosome in that case uh, ultimately the zygote will receive both of the X chromosomes so zygote gets two X chromosomes so in that two X chromosomes they do not require both of the X chromosomes to function because they are the same chromosomes. So, they want to inactivate a whole X chromosome in certain cases or they sometimes need to inactivate certain portion of that X chromosome of the other X chromosome. So, in that both of the X chromosome, if we, if we see both of the X chromosomes are there inside and if one need to inactivate this X chromosome, let us say here, in that case, in the same manner, they will add uh, this methyl group to the H3 portion of that and that methylation is not a single methylation, this is a multiple methylation event. Di generally by methylation event, two methyl groups are added or trimethylation events where three methyl groups are added there. So, they will add all those methyl group here to that to the H3 portion of the gene uh, present in the X chromosome there and then the gene will be then the X chromosome is inactivated there and that is called the X inactivation. That is an example of how methylation inactivate things methylation inactivated genes. On the other hand, we have talked about the activation of, of methylation. 
So that is the idea. Methylation have the tendency of going both of this. It depends on the scenario. Let's say after the methylation, if the DNA and methylation takes place, let's say a, a particular tail, a C-terminal tail of the histone and due to this methylation, that histone kind of uh, having a kind of repulsive force between the DNA. In that case, the DNA is released and uh, the gene is accessible. On the other hand, if this methylation does the attractive feature between the DNA and histone, in that case, the histone is wrapped tightly, uh, DNA is wrapped tightly onto the histone and uh, the genes are not accessible. So that's the process of uh, histone methylation and acetylation. We have already talked about deacetylation also. So that's the process and the enzyme required for this methylation event is called histone methyl transferase. Simply methyl transferase. Methyl transferase. Simply because they are transferring the methyl group. So methyl transferase. Histone methyl transferase. And depending upon what kind of where exactly they are adding the methyl group the name changes. Let's say if they add the methyl group to the adenine. So we call it adenosyl methyl transferase if they add the methyl group to the adenine if it is methyl to thymine thymicyl thymidyl and all these different names are there so that's kind of it guys if you like the video please subscribe put some comments uh, hit the like button share it a lot with your friends thank you